Hey guys, Miss Peterson here, and welcome to our chemistry lecture on the mole. In this lecture, we're going to be going over how many particles are in a mole, talking about Avogadro's number, molar mass, and how to use both of those factors to convert between grams, moles, and our number of atoms, molecules, or particles. So, let's get started. What is a mole? We've talked about this before, but let's review. A mole is the unit that we use for counting atoms or molecules. Just like we use loaves to count how many bread we have, or we might use pounds at the deli counter when we're ordering slices of turkey, or we might go to the baker and order a dozen donuts. It's just a number that we use to count it. Okay. Now, Avogadro's number is a really big number. It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's how many particles are in a mole. Now, those particles could be atoms, they could be ions, they could be molecules, they could be donuts or moles, but it's always that one mole has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever. Typically, atoms or molecules, though. Now, we'll also be talking about molar mass. Okay, Avogadro's number tells us how many pieces there are in the puzzle. Molar mass tells us how many grams that would weigh. So if you're thinking about like a bag of Skittles, okay, a bag of Skittles might contain 15 or 16 Skittles and have a mass of about 28 grams. Um, and it's still just one bag of Skittles. So we can still just have one mole of atoms and have it be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, but that one mole, those atoms of aluminum, have a mass of 26.98 grams, where if we have something like water, its mass is 18.02. And again, how we find those is with the periodic table. So for example, for that H2O, we have hydrogen and oxygen, two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen, and then the masses of the atoms come, of course, from the periodic table. Okay, hydrogen has a mass of 1.008 or 1.01. I'm just going to round it to make it a little easier. And oxygen 16.00. So we got 2.002 and 16, which of course adds up to that 18.02 grams per mole, which is the molar mass. Okay, it tells us how many grams one mole of that atom or compound would weigh. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, how do we use then Avogadro's number as a conversion factor? Well, we use it to convert between number of atoms, particles, or molecules, and moles. So, when we're setting it up using our like dimensional analysis technique, it'll either be one mole over 6.02 atoms, or whatever, okay? or the 6.02 atoms, or whatever, over one mole. Okay, let's look at an example. How many atoms are in 2.3 moles of gold? So say I already had a little gold ring, and I already did the math with the molar mass to find that it has 2.3 moles. How many atoms does that mean that are there? Well, we'll start with our known, 2.3 moles, and then we want to convert to atoms, okay? Avogadro's number is what we use to convert. So we start with our known, 2.3 moles. And then for every one mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay. So the mole and mole cancel out. And then we have to plug it into our calculator. Okay, Make sure you're using that EE scientific notation button. So when I type it in, it'll be like 2.3 times 6.02 E, which means times 10 to the 23rd. And the answer comes out to 1.3846. Since I just have two digits here, I'll round this and just say about 1.4 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's look at another one where we have to use the conversion the other way. So, if I have a sample that has 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, how many moles is that? Okay, so again, we're going to start with our known, the molecules, and then we want to know how many moles that would be. So, we'll start with the 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And then we know we want to cancel out the molecules. 
So we're going to be putting Avogadro's number on the bottom. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per one mole. And unfortunately, chemistry doesn't have a good abbreviation for molecules because when we try to shorten it, it looks like mole. And mole, we really just shorten by, you know, taking off the E. Um, so molecules, we just kind of have to write out, which is kind of annoying. But anyways, those molecule units cancel out. We can even cancel out the times 10 to the 23rd. And then we just have 3.01 divided by 6.02, which I'm sure you might be able to tell is 0 0.5 moles. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's look at the next one. Using molar mass as a conversion factor. So again, we use that to convert between grams and moles. Okay, so anytime you're converted between grams and moles or you see grams show up in a problem, you're going to need the molar mass as a conversion factor. Oh, also, you find the molar mass using the periodic table. So as a conversion factor, it'll be their one mole over X number of grams, where that X, again, is the mass from the periodic table, or X number of grams over one mole. So let's look at an example. How many grams will I need to weigh out if I need two moles of zinc? Okay, well, I go to my periodic table. Also, I'm going to be abbreviating molar mass with mm. Okay, so molar mass... I typically use MM for that abbreviation. So when I go and I find zinc on my periodic table, it's number 30 in the D block. Um, the molar mass of zinc is 65.38 grams per mole. So one mole has a mass of 65.38 grams. So if I need two moles, you know, I'm going to have to multiply it. Setting it up using our system, we have two moles. And then one mole is 65.38 grams. So we just have two times 65.38, which is 130.76. And we only had two digits in the two moles, so I'll just leave it at about 130 grams. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's look at one more. Okay. If my sample of NaCl weighs 12 grams, how many moles of sodium chloride do I have? Well, first I need to find the molar mass, but this is a compound, so I'm going to have to do a little math before I even get to my actual calculation for the conversion. So my molar mass, I have 1 Na and 1 Cl. Na has a mass of 22.99, and chlorine is 35.45. So when we add that together, we get 58.44 grams per mole, okay, which is the molar mass of NaCl. So if I have 58.44 grams, I have one mole. This is asking me if I only have 12 grams, how many moles is that going to be? Well, we have 58.44 grams will go on bottom and one mole will go on top. The gram units cancel out. And I have 12 divided by 58.44, or 12 times 1 divided by 58.44, which gives me 0 0.205. So I'll just say about 0, oh yeah, 0 0.205. We had three digits here, so I can have three digits in my answer. So about 0 0.2 moles. Okay, cool? Okay, cool. But we're not done quite yet. Oops. Let's look at putting them together because sometimes we're going to have two-step conversions. So let's look at this one. I have a pure silver ring with a mass of 364.0 grams. How many atoms of silver are in my ring? So I want to know how many atoms. My known is the grams. Now, do I have a conversion factor that can go straight from grams to atoms? No. I have grams to moles, which is the molar mass, Okay, and let's go ahead and find the molar mass of silver, which is AG, is 107.87 grams per mole. Okay, so I'm going to be using that factor and with how many atoms to convert. So we have 364.0 grams, 
And then we have 107.87 grams is one mole. And we could do it out in two steps and solve it out right here. But, oh yeah, let's solve it out right here and then I'll show you guys how it looks all in one step. So we got 364 divided by 107.87, which gives me 3.37 moles. So then if I wanted to convert to atoms, I could then use Avogadro's number, okay? I want to cancel out the mole, so I know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, the mole and mole cancel out. I plug that into my calculator times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I get 2.03 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Okay. Now, I could have done that all in one step. We don't need to solve out this middle part. Rather, we can just put all of our multiplications together. So if I put one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms there, we can see that the mole and mole cancel out and the gram and gram cancel out. And it's the same calculation, 364 times 1 divided by 107 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And let's look at one more. If I dissolve 3.2 moles of calcium chloride in water, how many particles of calcium chloride will be in solution? Okay, well this one's just a 3.2 moles to particles. So that is just a one-step conversion. We can do that with Avogadro's number. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And we get 1.926, so I'll go 1, or I'll just say 1.9 times 10 to the 24th particles. Yep. Now, if we wanted to go calcium ions, a couple different ways we could do that. Okay, we know that in one calcium chloride, there's one calcium and two chlorine ions. So if I have one particle of CaCl2, I'm gonna have the same number of particles of the calcium ions. I don't need to do any extra math there because it's a one-to-one -one conversion. But for the chloride ions, I could add another conversion here. So we have 3.2 moles of the calcium chloride. And then because for every one calcium chloride, for every one mole of calcium chloride, because again, that's just how we count it, we're gonna have two moles of the Cl minus because there's two chlorines per each one calcium. So we're basically taking that number and multiplying it by two. So we can take it, we have 3.2 times 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is basically just the 1.9 times 10 to the 24th times 2. Another perfectly valid way to solve it. And we get 3.85, so 3.9, I'll round that up, times 10 to the 24th uh, ions of chlorine. Okay, cool. And that's how we use molar mass in Avogadro's number. Got it? Okay, cool.